the next talk uh, is uh, by uh, uh, Andre, Data Flow Analysis as Effects and Gradient Monads. And I have a pre recorded uh, talk. So, so go ahead. Do you want to say something? Um, no, I didn't have anything to say. Uh, yeah, just thank you. Yeah, so uh, Andre is around for uh, questions, but I will run the pre recorded uh, video and he's around for questions, I'm sure. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrei Vashkovich, and I am a second year PhD student at the University of Cambridge. This talk is research. I'm interested in application. I specifically consider classical data flow analyses, such as live variables and constant propagation. The talk is based on joint work. Watch it. Data flow analyses form a family of program analyses that deal with properties of data and their interaction in the They are kind of analysis implemented in various static analysis tools and inside optimizing compilers. For example, live variable analysis is used for removing dead code from a program's intermediate representation and for efficient register allocation. Constant propagation, that is, removing reads from memory of an expression is not a is another common optimization. Other analyses generate example, reading from a variable that has not been assigned to. It has been known for a long time that many data flow analyses possess similarities that point to a deep connection between them. They can all be seen as instances of one general analysis with the same underlying efficient work list algorithms that can be performed by a compiler. One such generalization is that of monotone data flow frameworks by Kam and Ullman. On the other hand, effect systems have been a general program analysis framework, mainly modeling side effects, such as memory accesses and exceptions. They were first introduced by Gifford and Lucasen in the context of concurrent programs without data races. A type and effect system uses judgments of the form gamma entails E is of type tau with effect F, where F is a representation of an effect drawn from some set of effects here denoted by a calligraphic F. The simplest effect systems might use a set of memory locations as the effect of an expression. It is not surprising that various effect algebras and even just type systems have been developed for data flow analysis, though mostly in a very ad hoc way and not unified. Recent research has focused on an algebraic approach to effect systems, where the set of effects might be the carrier set of an effect algebra. The main reason for this is the need for combining the effects of two sequence expressions. Do A, then B, should have the effect that depends on the effect of A and the effect of B, which is modeled by the binary operator of the algebra. There is a natural connection between effect systems and graded monads, a generalization of monads that is used for modeling the categorical semantics of effects. The question that motivated this work is natural. Is there a graded monadic view and an effect system view that unifies classical data flow analyses, in particular, monotone data flow frameworks. We developed a type and effect system for monotone data flow frameworks based on the concept of transfer functions. We also developed a related graded monadic view of this effect system, which can be implemented in a pure functional language such as Haskell using a variant of the state monad. The aim is to relate program analysis and graded monads. 
I will focus on live variables in this talk. I will first introduce the key underlying concepts, transfer functions, gradient monads, and effect algebras. Next, I will show how imperative flowchart programs admit, admit an effect system that models data flow analyses. Afterwards, I will introduce a simple graded monad that makes use of this effect algebra and provides a way to perform data flow analysis through the type system of the host language. Finally, I will discuss a graded monad based on the same algebra that embeds the analysis semantically in a way performing dead variable elimination guided by the type of an expression. The first key notion is that of effect algebras. Definitions and assumptions of effect algebras differ depending on the author, and we assume a fairly general structure. The algebra has a carrier set D, a binary relation representing sub-effecting, a multiplication operation representing sequencing, and an identity effect used for pure expressions. First, we assume D with sub-effecting is a partial order and that the multiplication operator satisfies the monoid axioms, associativity and identity. In addition, we assume that multiplication is monotonic with respect to sub-effecting. If X is a sub-effect of Y, then X sequence with Z is a sub-effect of Y sequence with Z, and the other way around. Some authors assume that the partial order is a joint semi-lattice, and that furthermore, the multiplication operator is distributed over its join. We make no such distributivity assumptions. Graded monads are a generalization of monads that use the idea of effect algebras. Given an effect algebra, which we also call a grading algebra, like this one with carrier set D, a graded monad is given by a family of type constructors TR, where R is drawn from D. Think of it as a monad with an annotation, which we call a grade. It is not the case that every individual TR is a monad itself. Instead, the operations of a graded monad manipulate these grades. The operations in a graded monad include the usual return and bind. As before, Return presents a way to wrap a pure computation inside a monad, which is shown in the grade itself. It is the identity of the monoid. The family of bind operators are similar to the ones for monads, with the main idea that the way grades are combined is using the multiplication or sequencing operator. In addition, there is an explicit sub-effecting function that can be seen as explicit upcasting, which leverages monotonicity of the underlying grading algebra. Graded monads have their own laws they have to satisfy, which are natural extensions of the monad laws of identity of associativity, along with a monotonicity law regarding the interaction of bind and sub. The graded algebra we focus on give program analyses. The key concept from monotone data flow frameworks we use is that of transfer functions. Every instance of a monotone data flow framework defines equations that determine data flow values at each program point in a control flow graph. Consider this flowchart program. We want to perform live variable analysis. That is, determine for each program point which variable values might be used after that point in any program execution. Either by just looking at the program or running the standard algorithm, this is the result. I put the data flow values in on the left and the data flow values out on the right. These data flow values are subset of the set of all variables, x, y, z, and r in this case. For each statement, we can define a transfer function. A transfer function shows how data flow values before and after the statement are linked. In the case of live variables, this is a function from values out to values in. And here are the transfer functions for each individual statement. We will get back to this program later. 
The key insight is that transfer functions of all monotone data flow frameworks form an effect algebra. The carrier set is that of all possible transfer functions, which are just all functions from data flow values to data flow values, and these depend on the analysis. Subeffecting is the over approximation relation for the respective analysis, lifted to the function domain. The multiplication operator is either the reverse function composition for forwards analyses such as constant propagation, or function composition for backwards analyses such as live variables. The identity of multiplication is always the identity function lambda x dot x. If the set of data flow values is a lattice, then transfer functions with subeffecting are also a lattice. We're only really interested in it being a join semi-lattice. We will use the standard symbol for join. With all this in place, it is not difficult to find a program analysis. We consider very simple flowchart programs written in a very imperative style. We represent a control flow graph as a set of uniquely labeled statements, L colon S, where L ranges over labels and S is a statement. Statements are either assignments, where an arithmetic expression is assigned to a variable and the program counter then moves on to another label, or branches that um, are based only on non-negativity tests, or halts. We assume a hygiene when it comes to labels. All labels and statements correspond to other labels, and there is no label duplication, and so on. With such a simple language, it is not surprising that the effect system fits in one slide using only three rules. The effect system is based on transfer functions. The effect of an expression is a transfer function for the rest of the program. That is, the transfer function that maps the data flow value at the end of the program after a halt is encountered to the data flow value at the entry to the statement. We also make use of a context which differs from the usual context gamma used for typing inference. It is a map from program labels to transfer functions. And this context contains the data flow information. It is a map from program labels to transfer functions. For each analysis, this notation with uh, a double angular brackets around a labeled assignment with TF in the subscript represents the transfer function corresponding to the respective assignment. In the case of liveness, the transfer function kills or removes the variable being assigned to and generates or adds all the variables that appear freely on the right-hand side of the assignment. We also have a use function, which is the transfer function that adds variables to a live set if they're used by the value V. The rules are unsurprising but they are presented in a strange way for an effect system. You might even consider this an annotated type system. The effect for every statement merely looks up phi of L, where L is the label of the current statement. Looking at the rule for a sign, we merely want phi of L to be equal to the result of sequencing the transfer function of the assignment X becomes E with phi of L prime, where L prime is the label of the next statement. Compared to usual type and effect systems, we don't have a notion of a closed expression, and the context we're looking for is non-empty. The main takeaway is that this effect system, if you want to call it that, encompasses all monotone data flow frameworks. Effect systems in an imperative setting are a rather odd application of the theory. We tend to look at functional languages. Indeed, we can look at a functional programming language augmented with assignments to mutable variables drawn from some fixed set of locations. However, we can go beyond that and present a graded monadic view. Our immediate goal is to transform a flowchart program into a computation value in a graded monad where grades correspond to the same transfer functions as before. In this talk, I will only show this translation and the graded monads for live variables. The transformation for flowcharts to graded monadic code is based in McCarthy's transformation. McCarthy demonstrated that flowchart programs can be translated to pure functional programs 
in which each statement corresponds to a function with control flow achieved by mutual recursion. Here, we convert each label's instruction into a separate monadic value and use notation resembling that used by the state monad. So the flowchart we considered previously can be written as the program on the left and could be transformed into five, uh, six mutually recursive values, G0, up to G5. I'm using do notation lifted from Haskell, which desugars into a sequence of binds inside a graded monad. The translation is straightforward. Go to's are transformed to usage of the corresponding GI's, and assignments are represented as sequences of puts and gets. For example, the assignment in L4 first has to read from Y, bind it to a read from Z, bind that to a write to R, bind the overall result to the value representing the final statement, that is, the one with label L5. The simplest graded monad that allows us to do this is called multi-state triv. It provides access to a fixed set of mutable variables via monadic values put and get, like in state. Each variable has separate values for getting and putting, for example, put x and get x. A value of type multi-state triv phi a is a stateful computation that eventually returns a result of type a with an associated transfer function phi. The actual implementation of this monad under the hood is not difficult. It is a simple wrapper over a state monad that provides access to multiple non-aliasing states. In Haskell, this can be implemented using, say, monad transformers. To make the graded monad usable, it suffices to define the types of puts and gets. Assuming the type of x is a, the types of put x and get x are exactly what we would expect, with the main interesting detail being the grades. The transfer function that corresponds to put x just removes x from the live set. The transfer function that corresponds to get x just adds x to the live set. We use uh, the kill x and gen x notation for brevity. Let's look at what this looks like on an example. We have our example program. What are the types? Here are the types. All of these have the same monadic type. They are programs that might eventually halt. If they do, they halt with an int. However, they might have different grades, which we call phi zero up to phi five. The data flow analysis is recreated by monadic grades. This is evident from the typing constraints generated by the program. For example, since G0 writes to X and then proceeds to do G1, the transfer function phi0 is the result of sequencing kill X with phi1. We can find the least solution using a standard work list algorithm. And here it is. Notice that the transfer functions differ from the ones we saw earlier. This is because the transfer functions are not just a single, not for, not for just a single statement, but they relate incoming data flow values and data flow values at the end of the program. We can use these data, uh, these transfer functions to extract the data flow values themselves by merely applying the grades to the empty set. For example, applying phi zero to the empty set gives us the set yz which was the same set of live variables we computed before, for the zeroth statement. This graded monad was merely a wrapper. The grade said nothing about the shape or format of the values. We can go further. Grades are used to refine the types and operations the usual, of the usual state monad by the liveness information. Graded monad operations now take into account the grades and the grades say something about the shape of the values. In a way, we want to remove dead variables from the state and forget what they are. This paves the way to ensuring that only semantically valid analyses can be encoded as grades. We redefine the multi-state graded monad in the following way, guided by the definition of the state monad. State is really just a function from initial variable values to a pair of the result and the final values of the variables. 
that created monads multi-state takes this idea further. It takes a map of relevant, that is, live in variables, to their values and returns a pair of the result and values of variables that we used in the computation. Hence, we define the v refined store, store of v, to be the map from v to integers, which extracts values of variables. Reads of phi is equal to phi applied to the empty set, which are the live in variables and thus read by, the, by computation. Footprint of phi are those variables that are read or written to by a computation. We call it footprint, taking the idea from separation logic. To make this work, we need to define return, get x, put x, and bind. Return is a function that takes a value and returns a function from a store of values to a pair of this value and an empty map. Get x is a function from a variable store to a pair of the value of the store and the same store. Put x is a function that takes a value to write to x and returns a function from an empty store of variables to a pair of unit in the new store, containing only the store mapping x to its new value. The definition of bind is complicated, but it is essentially the same as that of the state monad but with the added manipulation of the refined stores. I omitted some work from our paper in this talk. In our paper, we dedicate special attention to constant propagation. The same effect system and flowcharts can also be used. However, constant propagation is interesting because it is not a distributive framework. That is, the transfer function multiplication is not distributive over the joins. This distributivity property has sometimes been hypothesized as a requirement for many algebras to be effect algebras. We do not believe this to be true. I also did not talk about how analyses other than live variables are presented as graded monads. In that case, just using gets and puts for assignments is insufficient. Instead, a separate monadic value with a manually written transfer function is required for every assignment. It is not elegant, but it works in a non-dependently typed setting. I did not discuss type inference either. To make type inference work, the host language requires support for equi-recursive types in order to support mutual recursion as type level. Other than this, only a few language extension necessary to make this work in Haskell. There are several further questions we intend to investigate. Mainly, what are the most general effect or grading algebra axioms that are necessary for representing various program analyses? We posit that the partially ordered monoid with monotonicity um, is general enough. What we have done is introduce an effect algebra that unifies monotone data flow frameworks. The algebra is a partially ordered monoid that satisfied monotonicity properties. I talked about how this effect algebra is used for an effect system in flowchart programs. The same algebra can be used as the basis of two graded monads, both based on transfer functions. The first of these is a trivial graded monad, which is nothing more than a wrapper around the state monad, possibly implemented through monad transformers. We saw in an example how it can be used to extract sets of live variables by applying the grade to the empty set. The second graded monad is refined and has a semantic link to live variable analysis. While the grading algebras in usage are the same, the latter monad has a clearer link between grades and values. That is all I had to say. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you. So let me uh, yeah, let me spot you. Uh, uh, any uh, questions for uh, for Andre? So let me actually ask uh, 
one question. I mean, actually, lots of actually questions came to mind uh, while listening to this. It's very nice. So uh, one uh, one thing is uh, monads obviously apply to much richer uh, kind of language, much more well-founded and integrating with all kinds of semantics. So can you uh, move beyond flowcharts and, and kind of work with like much more interesting languages with like all kinds of high order things and control structures and uh, and what, what do you gain from going this way and what do you lose from the going uh, from conventional analysis to monads? Um, so indeed, we can look at various different kind of structures. So flowcharts is just one option. Uh, the overall goal was to see whether classical data flow analyses can be implemented in this setting. Um, it is indeed possible future work to look at different kinds of uh, control structures, something that's more rich than this. And I said one of the extensions, uh, do you need recursive do notation? Um, so the main thing that is necessary is to have equi-recursive types because you want to embed the analysis inside of the type system as part of the grade, and you want to have recursion at that level. Uh, when it comes to when you wrote that uh, do g zero and it refers to g one, g one refers to that that looked like a recursive do. Is this am I correct or? Ah, okay. I'm going to share the screen just to uh, point uh, to that just in a second. Uh, I believe you're referring to uh, this slide over here. Yes. Yes. So um, this is the sort of encoding that we have of a flowchart as a functional program using do notation. And we, if we have mutual recursion, that's efficient. But yes, uh, recursive do notation would help. Okay. Uh, any uh, any other questions from uh, from the audience? I have a question, but I cannot ask it from q and A. I'm from Flavian, from the organization. Well, since uh, you're, you're here, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, um, do you know of uh, SSA, uh, single state assignments? Uh, it's a technique used for, well, it's a new use for uh, dealing with uh, flow graphs. And uh, mm -hmm. when you perform some SSA, uh, it's known that uh, what you obtain is uh, similar to uh, um, or, uh, CPS translation, so uh, to, uh, to CPS style uh, calculus. So I was wondering uh, what is the uh, how it translates to your um, to the when you get to the gradations. So uh, it, sorry, I... mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, you take your um, your graph and you perform mm -hmm. the uh, SSA transformations to get an uh, SSA, mm -hmm. and uh, what you obtain is uh, something that is similar to uh, CPS. And here, uh, what is your translation doing on what, I mean, uh, what is, is an equivalent of the SSA transformation to you hmm. in the uh, um, world of weighted monads? Right, well, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I hadn't considered what happens uh, if you convert programs to SSA, given that you also have to deal then with the uh, phi functions um, when two distinct branches return to the same point. So I don't know the answer. Okay. Uh, but uh, thank you for pointing it out. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, if you look at uh, some old papers, uh, this ACSA transformation have uh, some meaning in the, uh, for lambda calculus. I mean, it's, it's in the sense of this is just a transformation in lambda calculus. Finding mm -hmm. the uh, small last functions that have a surface representation as uh, CPS. Mm -hmm. So this may be easier to deal with. Um, Rather than using uh, the um, the fee uh, fee transformations, the mm -hmm. fee stuff. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, I think we're uh, just on time here. So thank you again, Andre, and uh, thank you for uh, for the great talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.